In every season of anime, there are those shows which are clearly plugged to be one of the standout titles of that clutch of productions. That show which has been lavished with as much praise, attention, staff and time as the studio in question can throw at it. Bones has one of the best teams in the business and it's taken its animation posse out into low earth orbit to ward off celestial enemies from the dark side of the moon. Their ward? A teenager with no idea about his father's heroic past and a dream to not die. I think that'll work. With these powers combined, he is Captain Earth! This original animation from the famous Japanese studio is directed by Takuya Igarashi, an experienced talent with credits spanning from Salem Moon, or on Host Club, and including Bone's own classic title, Soul Eater. With Igarashi at the helm, the team bring to life the tale of a disillusioned teenager named Daichi. His father died in an accident whilst on a mission for the Globe Organization, so I guess the same outfit from Bruno the Kid went into space defense. Huh. Ever since, Daichi vowed to stay away from the island of Tanagashima, the island where Globe is based and where Daichi used to spend his summers. But he is spending this summer there all of a sudden? I guess he changed his mind. Whilst this is going on, it becomes apparent that evil forces are preparing for another assault on Earth. The planetary gears are a race that live on libido energy. Yes, libido. They are precocious beings, who hail from the planet Uranus. I get it, they're sexual deviants. And if one of these robots should make it to the Earth, humanity will be sucked dry! While still a child, Daichi met with a young boy named Tepe who had special rainbow powers. And one day, the pair of them awoke a special girl who was asleep inside a protective bubble. Not through some special incantation, just by Daichi asking her if she'd like to play with his boomerang. Daichi, please! After that day, the trio was separated, and it's only now when the planetary gears are mounting a new assault that they're all brought together again. Daichi is then lured by an urge to re-enter the abandoned base he entered as a kid by a young girl, who then gives him her magic gun. He is then whisked away to another base and given the keys to Earth's mightiest weapon, the Earth Engine. Through awesome suit-up sequences, Daichi protects the Earth with this killer mech against the kinky Kilty Gang. I forgot to mention earlier that Igarashi and his chief writer Yoji Enikido worked together on another Bones mecha series. I did that for a reason, and here it is. They helped create Star Driver. The second I realised this factoid, Captain Earth's aesthetic and flamboyant style with less of a regard to narrative cohesion made perfect sense. Other parallels were made clear. The use of a summary island as a backdrop, sensual robots, singing alien girls and stealing power, intricate mech designs and transformation sequences. They all correlate. However, in my opinion, I feel that Captain Earth is a slightly more grounded series in comparison to Star Driver. It's as if the producers took a leaf out of the more recent Gundam series book and made something a little more stock. But that's not stopped Star Driver's ideals trickle into the show's look and feel. This focus on presentation has led to a production which is very gorgeous and more than able to hook people in on looks alone. Behind the veil of epic vistas and insanely detailed robotics is a narrative which is less appealing. Not unappealing only less so than its visual cousin. In the first episode in particular, one is left dazed and confused by the huge amount of terminology being thrust into one's face. Machine Goodfellows, Kilty Gang, Libido, Earth Engine. It's a little much for a first outing. If this had been delivered in bite-sized chunks, then the narrative would have been easier to understand at first. There are lots of unanswered questions at first, but I think I can understand where the writers are going. Their intention is to throw everything on the figurative table and see where it falls, and then piece everything together over the course of the series until we get one complete image from which the fans can spread across the internet. It's a bold strategy and one that could backfire had Bones not paid close attention to the art style. That art style is more than enough to keep people interested despite the bamboozling writing tactics. The artwork and the writing work together to create something which is complex, thoughtful and satisfying. In fact, there is a strong nod to one of history's greatest writers with references peppered across the narrative. William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream is a strong influence here. There are two standout hints, one being the name of Daichi, Tepe and Hana's team, the Midsummer Knights, and the other being the mischievous AI Puck, emulating the character of the same name from the Shakespearean tale, who is bound to cause trouble during the series. The three main characters of Daichi, Tepe and Hana, the girl that two boys found inside the globe base, are an obvious trio who use their powers and skills to aid Earth against the planetary gears. However, there is another organisation named Salty Dog overseeing Globe's operations, and believes that the three are dangerous to society and try to contain them with little success. This subplot of Hana and Tepe being locked down was powerful, despite its relative brevity in the grand scheme of things. It conveys that these two special beings have been repressed for the longest time, and only with the return of Daichi can they flourish and they do. They have the chance to be themselves and form new personalities alongside their new friend and cohort. This is but one of Captain Earth's elaborate pieces to be used to complete its ultimate puzzle. 
What viewers will have to understand when watching Captain Earth is that this is not an episodic tale. You can't miss one single episode, as important puzzle pieces will be placed down, and new pieces will be brought into the mix. You'll be lost if you don't pay close attention. If you do, you will be rewarded with a beautiful show to look at for 24 minutes weekly. The show's mission to be Spring 2014's champion is on course for becoming a reality for the general anime audience. This show is going to be huge across the international anime community. Does it do that for me? Yes, to a point. I really like this show and it's probably going to be in my top 5 anime of the season, but it's not quite number 1 material. There's plenty of time for that to change though. I'm certainly going to see how this puzzle forms over the coming weeks. Captain Earth is available to stream on Crunchyroll. My rating? Continue. A very good example of how a modern mech show should look. If you like what you heard, please visit my Patreon campaign to help grow Anathar at patreon.com forward slash X.